IndyCar is back at it again, talking about adding new tracks and wanting to go to new cities. They also introduced a new rule for the championship race at Nashville, plus Dodge is back into motorsports, and we have a couple on this days to talk about. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Before we get into the IndyCar news, we have a couple things to talk about that happened on this day, September 6th. The first one happened five years ago. That is when Mike Harmon delivered an absolutely legendary line when talking about Michael Annette at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So there was an incident between the two of them. Michael Annette then went and talked to the media and disparaged Mike Harmon to an extent, to which Mike Harmon responded on Twitter and said, quote, I apologize as a team, but you took it to a whole new level when a camera's in your face. Come bring your punk down to Applebee's on Crawford and call me an idiot to my face at Michael Annette. Now, if you're not familiar with Mike Harmon, he's a larger gentleman. The Harmonator could definitely do some harm just in terms of body mass alone. Definitely would squash me. So when he told Michael Annette to come down to Applebee's to get his ass kicked, well, that's pretty funny to me. <laughs> if you've ever been to the Applebee's in Cra on Crawford Road in Indianapolis, I haven't been there, but it seems like a pretty decent place for somebody to kick somebody else's ass at. But Mike Harmon, legendary line, <laughs> come bring your punk ass down to Applebee's. All right. Yeah, that is legendary. Also, things that happened on September 6th, 13 years ago today, on a Tuesday afternoon, Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon, two titans of the sport, two legends, two Mount Rushmore drivers of NASCAR, gave us an all-time finish at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. The final 12 laps of that race are absolutely legendary, and every single year, the clip gets tweeted out, and it should until the end of time, because it's just two greats of the sport going head-to-head, -head, exchanging blows one driving in deeper than the other the other one letting off trying to get back to the throttle before the other one guys just absolutely driving these cars on the ra ragged edge off the right rear which you really can't do anymore and it's a huge bummer just absolutely sideways trying to hold on to these cars incredible car control incredible throttle management just a great great clip so go ahead and check it out i can't put it in here for obvious uh trademark reasons but i did post it on tiktok at break hard and uh, on twitter at break hard blog so you can find the clip there but just a legendary clip of the two of them over the final 12 laps Moving into today's actual news, though, we once again have IndyCar CEO Mark Miles talking about wanting to add races. I mean, this comes on the heels of him getting absolutely dunked on this past weekend by Paddle Award. Mark Miles just seemed like he was pretty angry this past weekend at Milwaukee because he talked to the media about the future of the IndyCar schedule in 2026 and beyond. And you guys will not believe what he said they're looking at adding another track or going to new markets, the same thing that they've been talking about for the last 12 years at this point. And guess what's happened since then? We got a race at Thermal and Milwaukee Mile. So innovation at its finest. And speaking of that, let's get into what Mark Miles actually had to say here. He was emphatic when somebody asked him in the media, hey, have you thought about going back to Richmond next spring when because NASCAR banned in their spring date? Could that be a spot for IndyCar to land at? Mark Miles had this to say, quote, we're not going back to places like Richmond. You've got to get your head out of the old us. I don't want to go back to places that we've been, and I think I'm winning that battle. Keep in mind, he said this at the Milwaukee Mile, a place that they previously went to and then a decade later came back to once again. But they don't want to go back to places that they've already been. Except he said that at Milwaukee with zero irony in his voice, just absolutely did not understand what he was saying whatsoever. He went on to say, quote, we recently had a conversation where somebody said they want us back at Watkins Glen. And instantly someone said, oh, yeah, that's great. To which Miles responded, quote, no effing way. We've got to quit being what we've been. We have to show some innovation. So, no, this isn't one we've been to. So the thing I take the biggest umbrage with there is the fact that he said innovation, IndyCar and innovation, just those are two words that don't go together. Unless, of course, the sentence is IndyCar has had zero innovation. IndyCar does not believe in innovation. But the sentence of IndyCar leads the innovation, that's just not a sentence that should ever be written because this is a series that's using a 12 going on 13-year-old chassis next year, and they want to tell us about innovation. So Mark Miles went on to say, that they are looking at adding a race to the 2026 schedule somewhere between the start of the year at St. Pete and this proposed Mexico City date, which would fall around early to mid-April. Where would that race be at? Well, IndyCar wants to get to Denver. Obviously, that at the end of March probably isn't a place that you're going to have a race. And then they also want to go to Dallas. Keep in mind, there is a great mile and a half that they always put on a good show at there, but they just really can't find a spot to fit it it at on the schedule and texas has a hard time finding a spot for it because they have a nascar date that 
falls in the spring. And it's just hard to find any one of those other 51 weeks out of the year to put them on. So I get it. Scheduling conflict is hard when the track has one race all season. And then you want to find another spot for your date. And you're like, well, we only have, we have 17 races. You have 51 open weeks. We just can't find a spot to put you on the schedule there. So they are instead maybe want to have a street race there because it's close to NTT data's uh, headquarters in the United States. So maybe that is a place they end up at. They've also had talks with San Antonio. And when asked when this new date could be announced, this new race, Mark Miles said before the end of the year. And they were like, OK, like time frame wise, what does that look like? And he said before the end of the year, which tells me we're probably not going to hear about this before the end of the year, because this is what IndyCar does. They constantly talk about things and never actually do things. IndyCar is essentially becoming what CART once was. And that's a bummer. I don't want but like we used to have in the 90s, like because obviously that's just not happening where it's a lot of high speed ovals that just seemingly that ship has sailed. But also what I don't want are a bunch of makeshift street circuits that are half ass and you're constantly like, oh, I don't know if this is safe. Maybe, remember San Jose when cart champ car went there and it was ramping over railroad tracks like it just doesn't work. Uh, but any car is steadfast and trying to find new markets to be in. Miles went on to say, quote, we want to take markets over. I want us to be focused to getting to large urban markets in the South, West and Northeast, but we're not going to just keep adding races. We don't have ambition to get uh, to get to 20 or 25 races. So we have to be disciplined on where we go. They don't really want to expand past 17 races because why would you want to do that? It's not like people just forget about IndyCar randomly throughout the year. And then they're like, oh, right, there is an IndyCar race coming up or the race happens. And then they're like, dang, didn't know there's an IndyCar race that was happening this weekend because one, they're bad at marketing. Two, they're just bad at scheduling is really what it comes down to. Him wanting to say that they want to own markets in the South, NASCAR exists, so I just don't think that's going to happen. In the Northeast, well, you had the failed street race in Providence that you tried to do, failed street race in Boston you tried to do. Baltimore was pretty good, but that ultimately failed as well. New Hampshire failed, but yeah, let's try to go back to the Northeast again. I'm not saying they shouldn't be in the Northeast, but they seemingly have not had a very good track record in the Northeast. And then saying you want to own the West. I mean, you have a race in Portland, you have a race at Laguna, you have a race at Long Beach, and you have a race at Thermal. The state of California in 2025 is going to have three points paying races. What are you talking about wanting to own the West? Do you want to go to Las Vegas? Do you want to go to, to uh, Arizona? Maybe that's what he's talking about, but I don't think anybody's going to be like, damn, IndyCar came in here and absolutely dominated, put on a great event for the city. And everybody's, no, I just don't think that's happening. Not with this current regime. They've shown nothing of being able to do that um, beyond the established races that were already on the IndyCar ca uh, calendar. Yeah, Long Beach is a major event. Long Beach is great. Long Beach has been around way before Penske Entertainment. Is the Detroit street race any good? I wouldn't argue. I would say that is not Long Beach is not a track that is very memorable. And I don't know if it's anything better than what we had at Belle Isle. But hey, they want to continue to do things. He also talked about having an international series in the offseason, an exhibition series, which is great. I mean, you can talk about it. Is it going to happen? I have zero faith in it happening. So I guess we'll waste time and air and seconds off our life talking about it but they've explored the possibility of having a off-season championship three races maybe in australia japan south america somewhere in there um i say all that to say probably isn't happening so i don't think it's really worth even talking about at, at, at this point but the one thing i did agree with mark miles is he said there won't be any international races during the regular season which i'm actually pretty on board with it's just not it, it's too too costly, honestly, to, to do that for just one race. It doesn't really make that much sense, and it's not applicable to many of the sponsors that are in IndyCar, so I actually don't have an issue going forward with that. So yeah, IndyCar continues to talk about wanting to add races, go to different places, and once again, it's more talking. Just shut up and actually do something would be my advice to them, but uh, yeah, they're going to keep talking and doing what they do. IndyCar also announced a rule change for the championship race at Nashville next weekend. They will be bringing two different tire compounds to the race, which have to be used during the race. This is not the first time it's been tried on an oval. It's the second time. They did trial this back at Gateway in 2023, and it was met with a resounding, eh, all right. I don't think it's going to be anything spectacular at Nashville uh, next week. They did a tire test at Nashville a few weeks ago, blew a lot of tires. Paddle Award had a big crash from the sounds of it. Um, so maybe that's their thinking here is we're going to bring two hard tires, essentially, and one's just slightly softer than the other one. But I don't understand why you're doing this in a race that can decide the championship. This feels pretty short sighted and thrown together at the last minute. But it's IndyCar, so they're going to go ahead and do that. 
Moving on to the last bit of news for the day. Dodge is back in motorsports. Everybody can cheer and be happy, except for the fact that it's a Nitro Cross and not anything that people actually watch. I'm not sure where you can watch Nitro Cross at. I think it's on Rumble still, if you can sift your way through all the conspiracy theories, but I think that's where it's at. I'm not actually 100% sure. But Dodge will be joining the Nitro Cross series for the 2024 2025 season. I think it carries over into next year. They'll be partnering with the Dryer Reinbold team, which will be running a um, modified version of the Hornet RT hybrid. When I say modified, it's just bodywork. They all use the same spec chassis and everything like that. Uh, for the start of it, though, it's just going to be Hornet and Dodge decals on the spec body until the new body panels can get made for it to make it look a little bit more brand identifiable as a Hornet. Honestly, it doesn't look terrible as it is now the side of these cars just looks absolutely ridiculous as a small kind of tight hatchback here uh looking a bit like a lancia in a roundabout way but it's just too crammed together but hey dodge is back in motorsports people have constantly been wanting to see that happen it looks like you're getting your wish uh will dodge remain a company beyond 2025 who even knows at this point stellantis has zero idea on what they're doing they offer three vehicles for sale currently yeah Maybe they offer the Hornet. They offer the EV charger. And do they? Maybe they just offer two vehicles. Okay. They offer two vehicles off the top of my head that I can think of, which is good for a car company. When you think about car companies, you're like, you know how many cars we should offer? Two. Two is a good number uh, for us to start with. Our best selling models, get rid of all of them, kill them off. We don't need them. We're going to stick with two models that this brand has always identified with, that being electric vehicles. Yeah, genius move there. Uh, definitely see a long lasting future for Dodge. But hey, at least they're willing to spend some marketing dollars on motorsports. It's just unfortunately the motorsport that nobody watches, where they're going to promote a car that nobody wants and a Hornet. Uh, you can buy the Alfa Romeo version, which will break down probably just as much as the Dodge Hornet version will. Um, but at least they're Italian, so it, it's not any nicer in all honesty. Uh, but yeah, Dodge is back in motorsports, just not NASCAR or IndyCar or something, again, that people actually watch. So let me know in the comments what you think about the on this day, about the IndyCar uh, comments on the scheduling, IndyCar getting two different tire compounds at Nashville, and Dodge being back in motorsports. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.